hello and assalamu alaikum everyone i hope you're doing good uh, in today's video we are going to talk about fluidized catalytic cracking there are two parts of the video in the one in the first part we are talking about uh, theoretical aspects of fluidized catalytic cracking and the second part we are going to use aspirin hyses uh, and try to simulate uh, the fluidized catalytic cracking process so uh, as you can see from this picture uh, the raw oil that we are getting uh, from the refinery is further cracked down into a, a more useful product by using uh, a fluidized catalytic, uh, catalytic cracking unit in the first part you can see uh, the oil is being shifted uh, from uh, uh, let me show you with some indicators so you can see from here the raw oil is charged uh, using a pump uh, through a riser uh, in the riser basically is a kind of a reactor where most of the heavy hydrocarbon is being cracked down into a smaller hydrocarbons uh, which is collected uh, here in uh, in the section uh, you can see this is a separation vessel section in the separation vessel section we have uh, um, the product uh, in the form of gases and also we have a catalyst which is being separated from uh, uh, from the from the uh, from the uh, products that we are producing from here and it's being sent this catalyst is being sent to a regenerator whereas uh, the gas is the product that we are getting uh, is sent to a fractionator where we can fractionate there we can we can separate them uh, based on their <coughs> based their their volatility so you can see we have gases which is recovering on the top we have gasoline light gas oil heavy gas oil is being uh, taking off from the fractionator from the side streams and then we have some heavy crude oil which is sent to a slurry uh, settler where we can get the slurry or if we have any uh, still leftover heavy hydrocarbon which we can send back to the riser again it is being uh, it is being uh, cracked down into smaller hydrocarbons in the regenerator section we have obviously the sprint catalyst which is used which have carbon on uh, on its sides is being uh, the carbon has to, has to be removed from uh, from the catalyst so that it can, it can be reused again as a regenerated catalyst so uh, how we are going to remove the carbon is by using combustion air which uh, combusts all the carbon uh, into a in the flue gases which is being uh, taken off from the top of the uh, regenerative section and is being sent to uh, different units where if there is a need to remove uh, uh, the catalyst uh, is being removed off and sent back to the uh, regenerator so this is the overall picture of uh, of Luda's catalytic cracking let's move on to the next slide so if you look at this slide we have um, uh, the full refinery picture in front of you we have the crude oil which is coming in and we have a distillation atmospheric distillation vacuum distillation and then we have different uh, units which are uh, happening in in between uh, to the final product and you can see the one which we are going to talk about today is food ice catalytic cracking which is the heart of the refinery uh, all the gas oil that we are the raw gas oil that we are getting uh, in the refinery is being transferred to the food ice catalytic cracking where the the heavy hydrocarbons is being broken down into uh, into a, a more useful product which is sent further uh, and and then it is being used further uh, uh, you can see here in the blending agent uh, as, as, and also it's being used further to the product uh, in the different uh, different places where we need this so basically catalytic cracking is very important and the heart of the refinery uh, so let's talk about the overall uh, overview of the catalytic cracking so as i told you before the fcc is the heart of modern refinery it is nearly every major refinery must have a uh, fluidized catalytic unit and if you look at this chart you can see uh, the major major role of uh, in the refinery is basically for atmospheric distillation column after this we have vacuum distillation column and then we have uh, catalytic uh, cracking units so it is one of the most important and sophisticated contribution to the petroleum refining technology uh, its capacity you can see uh, one third of the to the atmospheric distillation capacity you can see from this picture how important this uh, catalytic cracking unit in the refinery uh, it contributes to the highest volume to the gasoline pool 
you can clearly see from this picture also this uh, chart where uh, this is uh, this plays a very important role you can see from here the portion that it covers is extremely important in the refinery after that we have a reform reformer then we have alkylation unit and then we have uh, a isomerization unit so it it plays a very important role in the refinery that is the most important uh, aspect of catalytic cracking so what is the purpose of uh, fluidized catalytic cracking so basically the purpose is as i told you before is catalytic crack uh, catalytically, uh, cat uh, catalytically cracked carbon carbon bonds in the gas oil uh, it uses fine catalyst in fluidized catalytic bread uh, here we use a very fine particles of catalyst uh, catalyst is allows for the immediate regeneration so whatever the catalyst that we have uh, need to be regenerated is sent to a regenerator so it is this allows an immediate regeneration of the catalyst which is also important for uh, fcc unit and the process uh, of doing this is taking few seconds so that we have to do all this cracking in seconds and also the regeneration process is also happening in, in seconds uh, the purpose is lower average molecular weight product uh, that we are taking from the raw gas oil and produce a very high uh, very useful product which is shown here on the picture. It also produces olefins which are the most important products that we uh, more useful products. It is coming from uh, a relatively less useful product. The attractive feed characters a small concentration of contaminants for example in this particular case you the the feed that we are choosing uh, is basically contains a very small amount of uh, contamin contaminants because these contaminants uh, will further poison the catalyst so that will be the uh, most attractive feed concentration that we will choose for this process uh, the small concentration of heavy aromatics uh, we have the aromatics content uh, must be uh, smaller in, uh, as compared to the other uh, other uh, components that is present in the feed. The side chain break off leaves cores to deposit a coke on the catalyst. So because of the side uh, chain reactions that we have the coke that is being deposited on the catalyst which we need to be removed further in the regenerator and must be intentionally designed to have for a heavy residue feed so this uh, whole process is basically designed uh, to crack down the heavy residue feed and mostly these designs are not only one they are more than one design uh, of the of this reactor so probably you can see later in this slides uh, in the slide that we i will show you some different uh, different types of designs that is possible uh, the main idea is to basically to crack the heavy residue more usefully into a more useful product and the product may be further so whatever the product that you're getting in this process may be may can be further processed by using a hydro treated hydro treatment process or you can use alkylation process further uh, to produce a more useful product more cleaner product uh, so this is the most uh, important aspects of why we are using uh, fluidized catalytic cracking so these are some of the pictures of fluidized catalytic cracking you can see uh, this uh, the design of this uh, catalytic cracking unit is relatively relatively different than the one which is shown on this picture so the design could be different but the main aspect of catalytic cracking is is same that is basically a crack down the heavy hydrocarbons into a lower more useful products so you can see from this uh, this particular picture here we have a fluidized catalytic cracking unit which is this part where we have the reactor and and, so, and then we have a regenerator which is shown on this picture so all our gas oils or the raw gas oil that we have taken from atmospheric distillation column or from anywhere else in the the refinery is being sent to a riser unit where it is being raised uh, to a main unit and this riser is basically a reactor where we we have uh, uh, the fine particle of catalyst and the raw feed which is going through uh, and it is going through a high temperature and at the start and then the temperature drops as it goes up so while doing this uh, the, it is the heavy hydrocarbon is being cracked into a uh, fine uh, before i show you that for example uh, this uh, the feed that we are sending inside to the uh, inside to the riser is not in the form of a liquid it is being 
obviously it is here it is a home of a liquid but it is being converted into vapors uh, so at this point the temperature is very high so and the feed is being sent to the riser in the form of a fine uh, droplets uh, these steam then carried over along with the, the catalyst to the riser the reactor where the reaction is happening and most of the uh, heavy uh, heavy hydrocarbon is being cracked down to a smaller more useful product obviously we need to use we need to separate because we have a catalyst and the feed mixture which is being converted into a more useful products along with the catalyst this catalyst has to be removed from the feed from the product so that's why we need to use side different cyclones and the purpose of cyclone is to separate the uh, the gas uh, solid mixture so the solid in this case is uh, the catalyst which is being separate separated from the gas and the gas uh, the gas is that is the product that is coming out from the top of the column is being sent to of a fractionator whereas the catalyst is uh, which is uh, which which deposit carbon on uh, on the sides is being sent to a regenerator where you can use a very combustible combustible air to uh, remove the carbon and convert this carbon to a flue gas which is taken out from the top which can be further processed uh, whereas the catalyst that is being regenerated is sent to the riser again so the process continues uh, whereas the gas is the product that we are getting from top is sent to the fractionator where it is being fractionated out uh, and we can get uh, the product from the top and the side products and all these products it can be further processed before it is being sent uh, out as a product so this is the overall complex of the fluid, fluid uh, catalytic cracking uh, unit here also we we can see from here that we have uh, the rector unit and the rector unit consists of a riser and then we have a feed unit which is basically a, a atomizer you can send your feed in the form of a very fine droplets and that it is uh, and the catalyst is being mixed along with this feed is being sent to the top uh, of the unit and this unit is called a stripper where we can strip out uh, any catalyst from uh, the gas uh, the product and the product can be recovered on the top uh, we can use the cycle also for separation of uh, catalyst along with the gas uh, the catalyst that is being uh, uh, that that is being recovered uh, is being basically settled down on this part and uh, this valve is being open once we reach uh, uh, we reach uh, some accumulation of the catalyst on this part on the stripper then this uh, catalyst is being sent to the regenerator the reason why we have a valve here is obviously we are using a uh, air blower and this air is combustible air if uh, we don't have a proper weight of the catalyst on this part it could goes uh, on this side of the reactor which is uh, not uh, good uh, for the reactor so it has to be balanced so that's why we have a valve so once we have reached uh, enough weight on the catalyst on this side it has been opened and it is sent to the regenerator in the regenerator obviously we can use uh, combustible air and we have cyclones so to uh, to um, to remove all the carbon that we are recover, we are getting we have on the catalyst and this carbon is being converted into few gases which are uh, nox and you can see we have carbon monoxide carbon dioxide all these gases is being recovered on the top whereas the catalyst that has been regenerated is being again is being sent to the uh, through the riser but we have a valve here so once we need enough uh, we have enough catalyst here we can open this one uh, it can uh, do as a cyclic process so this is the overall picture uh, what we are generating you can see from here the regenerator the, the temperature uh, ranges in the regenerator is between 650 to 760 whereas uh, the temperature in the reactor is about 493 to 554 so there is a balance of uh, temperature on both sides we can use these temperature balances uh, to, to to complete the whole process we don't require any uh, energy extra energy in this process because we can use uh, the same energy which is uh, in, in the difference in the energy the balance in the energy we can use in the whole the two processes to balance the whole process so so let's talk about some of the history of the uh, uh, catalytic cracking unit so for example in this we have a cyclic fixed bed crack, uh, catalytic cracking which is commercialized in 1930 
this is the first howdry process compression catalytic cracker uh, startup at sun oils uh, postburg new jersey flow in june 1936 and the three fixed bed crackers and process 2000 barrels per day so they are using basically a three fixed bed reactors and they are processing uh, 2000 barrels of per day of, uh, of the raw feed uh, raw oil into this unit other uh, adoptees uh, for the whole this process are Sun Gulf, Sun Clear Standards Oil of Ohio, the Texas company. Then we have Sun and Hardry start developing moving bed. In this particular case, they are using a fixed bed where they started to develop a moving bed process in 1936, and they commercialized the first uh, process, which is producing about uh, 20,000 barrel, which is processing basically to 20,000 barrel per day unit commissioned at. Uh, Magnolia Biomount Mount Refinery 1943. The fluidized bed uh, catalytic cracking of flow dense phase particularly solid process created by WK Lewis MIT. They, they are the early adoptees. Standard Oil of New Jersey, Standard Oil of Indiana, MK Kyrgios, uh, Shell, they are basically developing this fluidized bed catalytic cracking unit. Uh, they they have dense face uh, back mix reactor uh, the model one fcc unit at standard oil in Jer new jersey baton Rough refinery 1942 the model two dominated cyclic cat catalytic cracking during early uh, earlier years uh, so they are developing the fluidized catalytic cracking back in in the history uh, the dilute phase the riser reactor design they have different designs this is one of the design that they developed which is which consists of molecular sieve based catalyst in 1960s significant higher cracking activity and gasoline yield lower carbon and catalyst so the the good thing about these uh, these processes they are developing very less carbon on the catalyst whereas they are uh, improving in terms of uh, cracking ability and uh, in terms of the yield that they are producing the product that they are producing which is gasoline the plug flow uh, drastically reduce residence time of 90 percent of a feed conversions uh, you can see with this kind of uh, with plug flow design they uh, reduce the residence time and 90 percent of the feed conversion into a product more useful product which is one of the uh, the good things in dilute phase uh, riser reactor design which is is the one which is we are using these days uh, in terms of feedstock the chemical species in terms of chemical species consideration, uh, consideration aromatic rings typically condense to coke uh, and then feedstock can be hydrated to reduce the aromatic content <coughs> so the feedstock that we are using in this uh, fluidized catalytic cracking before sent to the cracking unit we can we, we can hydrate them which reduce the aromatic content and as, as i told you before the the feed content in the feed the aromatic content has to be lower in order to get more benefit ben, uh, benefit from it otherwise uh, the process uh, could produce uh, a lot of uh, side chain reaction which is not good for, for not for good for the catalyst and also it is a waste of energy uh, the amount of coke formed correlates to carbon residue of feed feed normally three to seven eight percent of ccr so carbon residue you can see uh, catalyst sensitive to hydro atoms uh, the atoms that we have so this catalyst that we are using here is basically very sensitive uh, uh, for hydro atoms uh, uh, poisoning the sulfur and metal uh, nickel and vanadium and iron these are the one which is um, uh, hydro atoms feed may be hydrated to reduce poison so as i told you before the feed need to be uh, hydrated before it is being sent to the fluidized catalytic cracking. Uh, atmospheric and vacuum gas oils are primary feeds. These are the primary feeds of this uh, FCC units. Could be adopted to hydro crackers for diesel production. Uh, not as expensive as a process hydro cracking, dedicated for by capacity uh, and gasoline diesel economics. Hydro treated feed results is cleaner low sulfur products. So the importance of hydro treated feed is very important because it can it, it, it lower down the sulfur contents. Uh, and if you lower down the sulfur content in the feed, obviously the product also be having less sulfur content. If the feed if you stock not hydro treated, then the product must be separately hydro treated to meet lower sulfur specs. So if your feed contains more sulfur content, it has to be reduced earlier. Otherwise, it has to be. Uh, reduce later on to meet uh, the the product uh, specs uh, that we are 
uh, product specs so it has to be either done before or it is, has to be done after in terms of uh, fcc products the primary goal make gasoline and diesel minimize heavy fuel oil production so that is our main concern we need to produce more useful product which is gasoline and diesel and in, in other words we will need to minimize heavy fuel oil production uh, how are we going to do this we have catalytic gasoline contributes large volume to the gasoline pool which will help us front end rich in olefins back end aromatics so we have the product that is rich in our olefins and uh, obviously the aromatic contents are less does not contain much ca6 c7 olefins very reactive and form lighter olefins aromatics this is our main uh, task coke production relatively small by very but very important obviously the coke is produced definitely produced but we need to minimize it in this process and whatever the coke that we are producing we need to burn off in the regenerator and produce uh, provide heat for the cracking so whatever the uh, heat that we are producing in the crack in the regenerator unit is being used in the cracking reactions so we are not using any heat from outside source we are using the same heat that we are producing in the regenerator and we can use it further in the cracking reaction again so we have a very good heat balance in this particular case large single source of co2 in the refinery so this is the where we can get a lot of carbon. obviously we are getting flue gases so we can produce a lot of carbon dioxide in this refinery uh, light ends high in olefins so we are producing a very good light ends and these light ends contain a very high amount of olefins good for chemicals feedstock can recover refinery grade propylene propylene butylene c5 olefins can be alkylated for a higher yield of high octane gasoline so these are the products that we can produce out of these uh, catalytic kerosene and jet fuel rarely made low c10 number because of aromatic lower quality diesel fuel uh, poor cold properties gas oils uh, essentially same boiling range as feedstock slurry heavy residues some of these are the some of the product that we can produce uh, high in sulfur and sulf small ring polynuclear aromatics and catalytic catalyst fines usually has a high viscosity disposition blended into heavy fuel oil blunker fuels and marine fuel oil so uh, hydro cracked blended into a cooker feed can help mitigate short cook problems so you can see we have different types of products from fcc units that can be produced in this whole process uh, catalytic cracking catalyst and chemistry so obviously the catalyst that we are using in this whole process is not purely zeolite but it is zeolite it is a composite basically so i'm not going into the metallurgy of this uh, uh, this uh, the, of the catalyst however i just give you an overall picture that the composite zeolite is dispersed in amorphous matrix the zeolite cons uh, concentration in the in, in this whole composite is 10 to 50 percent provide uh, the main purpose of this one is to provide activity stability and selectivity the matrix uh, basically 50 to 90 percent provide desirable physical properties and some catalytic, catalytic activity the acid side catalyst tracking and the hydrogen transfer by carbonium ion mechanism this is the mechanism that is being used in this process the basic reaction that we are getting is carbon carbon scission of paraffins and cycloparaffins to form olefins and lower molecular weight paraffins and cycloparaffins so we are doing basically a cracking and also we are doing isomerization in this whole process so in paraffins we are going for paraffins plus olefins and the reaction mechanism alkyl naphthenes is going to form naphthenes plus olefins and alcohol aromatics are going to form aromatics and olefins for example in this particular example we have one uh, heavy hydrocarbon is broken down into uh, into products uh, one of them is uh, summarized and one of them is uh, just normal olefins olefin exhibit uh, carbon carbon scission and isomerization with alkyl paraffins to form branch uh, paraffins this is the whole process the, in this whole reaction we can produce uh, not only cracking we are also produce isomerization so cycloparaffins will dehydrogenate condense to form aromatics and this is the further reaction that possible small amount of aromatics and olefin will condense to, uh, to ultimately form coke so this is the one which is forming on the on the catalyst which we need to reduce further so this is the whole chemistry that is being happening in on the catalyst so we are forming coke at the end obviously but we are basically looking to form uh, paraffins plus we are also looking to form olefins in this whole process 
so if you look at this picture you can see we this is the uh, this is the matrix the whole matrix of the catalyst and this com consist of zeolite you can see we have zeolite part we also have a clay we also have alumina which is nano nanomaterials you can see a small pores or small particles and then we also have a nano particle material which is silica also being dispersed so, so combination of all of these will form a matrix of a catalyst which is used uh, in FCC unit so FCC catalyst consists of a number of components to meet the demand of FCC system high activity selectivity accessibility and co selectivity is our main concern in the whole in the catalyst selection and this will help us to produce high gasoline and low coke yield a good fluidization properties and iteration resistance is very important for the catalyst as well because the catalyst has to be fluidized once it goes through the riser the size between the floor and grain of the sand you can see normally the grain of the sand this is the same size of the catalyst that we are using in this process the balance between the strength so it does not break apart as it moves through the system but does not abort the equipment internals so the size that we are using enough size that it can move through the riser but it will not disturb the internals of the riser about 50, 70 ton per minute typical circulation rate is being done in the riser for this catalyst. This, this catalyst must have a hydrothermal stability. It must, must also have a metal tolerance. Uh, and the main active component is obviously I told you before is zeolite. The internal pore structure with acid sides to crack large molecules to desire size range. So once the, the, the heavy, heavy hydrocarbon goes through those small porosities it is converted into a more useful product so uh, if you look at this picture this is a conversion level in terms of coke yield that is formed so we must have a balance between these conversion levels and the coke uh, that we are farming so research continues continues by catalyst suppliers and licensors ignition that both crackability and the feed and the severity of the operations are very important the theoretical basis of the cracking reactions lead to a more precise catalytic formation. So catalyst tailored to maximize particular product focus used to, to be a gasoline. So our main focus is to produce uh, gasoline. Now more likely dense diesel yield. Also we can also produce a more uh, diesel as well as a product. And also we need our target is to increase the olefin production. So you can see from different uh, time period, so from 1946 we have a low ammonium amorphous catalyst being used. Later in 1955 we have high ammonium amorphous catalyst being used. In 1964 we have zeolite catalyst and May of 1968 to 72 we have zeolite riser cracking. In 1980s we are using coke selector zeolite catalyst type and high coke selection catalyst. You can see here by using different catalyst type. Uh, for example, in this particular case, if you're using this catalyst type, the conversion level is not very high. Uh, conversion is only 50%, but the carbon that we are producing is also uh, high weight. So if you look at this one, the conversion is uh, approximately uh, 79 to 78%, and the coke, coke formation also uh, not very high. So this is more uh, of the re uh, most of the after effects of the research that is being happening on the catalyst. So, in terms of uh, additives, normally in the catalyst, as I told you before, it is not purely uh, a zeolite. It has a mixture of zeolite. So, we have uh, also different additives, uh, bottom cracking, ZSM5 for increase C3 production, uh, propane. Then we have carbon monoxide combustion promoter in the regenerator. So, we are adding different additives to help improve uh, further cracking of bottom uh, bottom friction and then we have increased production of c3 and we also have a com co combustion promoter which is uh, the because of these additives the fcc catalyst cost generally the second highest operating expense after the crude oil purchase you can see here the catalysts are not cheap they are expensive uh, may pay up upward of three thousand dollars per ton so that's why the regeneration process must be uh, very uh, very good in order to get uh, a good benefit from the catalyst so if you look at this one uh, FCC riser and regenerator FCC riser in this particular case is basically a rector so riser uh, in that typically uh, the temperature of uh, this riser is 1300 Fahrenheit and the outlet 
once it is terminated here the temperature drops to 950 to 1000 Fahrenheit. The increase uh, rectal temperature to increase the severity of and direction so the increased temperature is important for the cracking obviously the severity of the direction is also uh, uh, and the conversion is also happening because of the increased rectal temperature. The rectal pressure controlled by a fractionator overhead gas compressor. So we are controlling the pressure inside the unit. Uh, typically the pressure is about 10 to 30 pounds per square inch. High gas velocity fluidized fine cut. So the velocity of the gases that we that is entering here has to be very high because it has to take the catalyst with them to uh, and lift them to the top where we, we have further cracking current design have riser contact times but typically about two to three seconds so as i told you before the erection process or uh, the lift time uh, the residence time inside is uh, extremely uh, high two to three th seconds only they stay inside and the process of cracking is happening in, in, in between two to three seconds Important design point, quick, even and complete mixing of feed with catalysts. The design has to be in a way that is not only quick, it has to be, uh, it has to be uh, good with mixing with the feed and the catalyst. So the line sensors have proprietary feed rejection injection nozzle system to accomplish this. So the feed that is entering inside to the riser is not in the form, uh, in, the, in, a, in the form of a fine, uh, fine particles which is which is which could be possible with by using an injection nozzle so why we are sending in the form of a nozzle because it will help us to take to convert this feed into a gas form and also it help us to lift the catalyst which are the fine particles along with them to the top if in case the feed is not in a form of optimized way or not in the form of gas or in the form of a liquid if it is mixed with the catalyst which i told you before the catalyst is a mixture of uh, different things and one of the component in the catalyst is silica if it uh, reacts with the catalyst it can could become muddy and you know silica is one of the uh, one of the component in, in the sand <coughs> so if it is a liquid form the feed is in liquid form if it is mixed with the catalyst it can form a big solid mass which is difficult to move up so in order to make sure that the feed is in the form of a gas we need to use atomizers and we it is high temperature so by the time it enters inside it is already in the form of fine droplets like a gas and it can easily go with the catalyst and the reaction can easily happen and crack down into a fine into a product so that's why we need to use atomized feed instead of using a uh, big batch of feed for rapid vaporization so can improve performance of existing unit because of this uh, this design so in terms of our cyclones the cyclones as i told you before that one the one which we are using in the regenerator and also the one which we are using in the riser after the riser termination process part is basically to uh, gas solid separation cyclone increase cross-sectional area decrease gas velocity so you can see here because of their design it help increase cross section area decrease gas velocity and you already know that uh, in uh, inside uh, because of the inertia the gases have less inertia as compared to the the catalyst so the catalyst can goes down by gravity whereas the gases can go up and can be easily removed from uh, the catalyst rapid separation to prevent our cracking if you don't do this uh, separation of catalyst with the product it can our crack and you can produce many side reaction which you don't want in this particular stage the regenerator operates 1200 to 1500 fahrenheit here in the regenerator temperature limited by metallurgy or catalyst concern so metallurgy means the catalyst is made from different components so based on these uh, component these can components can go through different reaction which is not good for the catalyst so that's why it is limited by the metallurgy in terms of catalyst point of view uh, temperature determines whether combustion gas is prim primarily carbon, di carbon monoxide or carbon dioxide so the temperature inside the reactor must be maintained if you don't maintain the temperature it could form more carbon monoxide and le rather than carbon dioxide partial burn under 1300 fahrenheit high co2 content outlet to carbon monoxide boiler nhrc heat recovery and steam generation system 
uh, is being employed full burn if you do full burn high temperature produce very little carbon monoxide simpler waste heat recovery system so if you want a partial combustion in this whole process then obviously uh, the process will be uh, better as compared to if you do full burning then you have a more complicated system so uh, our temperature balance in the regenerator has to be very very important but very much precise as well so fluidized catalytic technologies that is used throughout the world as i told you before uh, they are different designs um, for the cracking units the purpose is the main purpose is same uh, not very different not fully different design but somehow they are uh, different in terms of their designs axion residing cracking uh, Exxon Mobile Exxon Research and Engineering, they produce catalytic cracking unit, they are using the same cracking units, whereas Haldor Topsy, yes, they produce fluid eye cracking unit and they also have a pretreatment unit along with the cat 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 catalytic cracking because the feed that we are using must uh, be pure without uh, aromatics it must be clean before it is sent to the fluidized catalytic, catalytic cracking unit and then we have kbr which is using fluid fluid catalytic cracking high olefin content uh, and residing cracking so they're producing very high olefin contents lumus technology fluid catalytic cracking for maximum olefin they're using this one shaw fluid catalytic cracking deep catalytic cracking cracking reside cracking shell global uh, solution they produce they are using catalytic cracking and uop they are also using uh, catalytic cracking and these are the, some different technologies that is used in by the different providers so as i told you before there are many different uh, design aspects of the fcc unit you can see we have this particular design we also have uh, this kind of a design unit we also have uh, this one and similarly we have uh, different uni unit designs and you can see uh, they are uh, designs a little bit different but the main purpose is basically to get cracking and as well, uh, also to get regeneration part so these are the regeneration this is the crack this is the rector part this is the regeneration this is the rector part so this is the these are the different configuration of <coughs> the fcc unit uh, that's, that is being used uh, by different companies. We can see here the ESSO model 2, ESSO model 3, ESSO model 4. These are the three different models that is being used by ESSOs. And then we have uh, transfer units, risers, we have UOP stand units, we have MW Kilog uh, ortho flow unit that is being used by different uh, industries. So uh, these are some of the other configuration you can see. Uh, we have Exxon Flexi Cracking IIR uh, FCC unit, and this is uh, this is mostly being used throughout the world. And then we have MW Keylock design, which is uh, uh, slightly different than this design, but is the main purpose obviously is the same. So I hope you uh, get um, the basic understanding of what is FCC units. <laughs> in the next part of the video, we are going to use uh, fluid eyes catalytic cracking inside Aspen Hyces, and we are use, we are trying to see how we can use Aspen Hyces to simulate uh, the fluid eyes catalytic cracking. So thank you very much for this part. Uh, let's jump into the next part.